I went to the South Canadian History Museum in Noble, Oklahoma, and they said they could not identify this item. It was hung among lots of wrenches, fence pullers, and various implements. The handle is designed to fit a hand and is sized appropriately for a hand tool. I asked if they knew what it was and said he thought it might be for keeping yarn straight in a loom. What do you guys think? It's definitely a meat tenderizer. Patented by Marshall E. Hunt of Belle Plaine, Iowa on November 1, 1898. The patent says, The object of my invention is to provide a simple form of device, particularly adapted for beating meat, for the purpose of rendering the notion of the tenderer being both to cut and to bruise the meat, and yet not mutilate it beyond the necessary degree to render it tender. My brother found this neat little thing in the attic at his new house. Around 7 inches tall and 5.5 inches wide including the handle. Made of brass and probably more than 100 years old. Does anyone have any ideas? It's a Denix coffee grinder from the beginning of the 20th century. An antique piece made in Italy where coffee is highly revered. It was probably intended for coffee grinding in households due to its small size, or a salesman sample or just a souvenir or decoration. What is this leather glove I found in an antique store in Lidditz, Pennsylvania? I bought it for $5, and I think it's over 100 years old. I got it because I was talking about Freddy Krueger like 20 minutes beforehand, plus it was in the antique scissors drawer. The back part is made of metal. I just looked closer and there are words engraved on it. The words the boss and I believe patented 1899 plus some other words I can't make out. Any ideas? It's a leather corn husker glove patented in 1899 and 1900. Made in the United States and crafted by the brand boss. You are wearing it wrong in the picture. It's supposed to go in the palm of your right hand, not the back of your left. The glove features adjustable straps, making it a one-size-fits-all option for anyone in need of a reliable and durable glove for their work. What is this strange charity shop find in Southern Ireland? The antique dealer said the metal is silver, and he thinks the ball is a nut of some kind, but no one has any idea what it is. I managed to open it, no marking on the inside of the silver, and the coconut, which is sadly very cracked, seemed to have a thin layer of pink powder on it at some point, but there was nothing else with it in the shop unfortunately. I've had this for a while, and it really baffled me. Does anyone here have any ideas? It's a particularly intricate yerba mate gordon straw. These gourds came from 18th century South America. However, the silver encasing was influenced by Europeans and their high value on metals such as silver. And only wealthier people used gourds encased in precious metals. Yerba mate is made from the leaves of the Ilex paraguariensis plant. This is a type of holy plant that is native to South America. It was originally consumed by the Guarani people who inhabited this region between the modern countries of Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. By the 1600s, the drink had spread throughout much of South America, and it soon became the chief export of Paraguay. Still to this day, yerba mate is incredibly popular in the countries of Argentina and Paraguay. What is this intricately carved knife? It was made to look like a wood-carved relief and roughly 8 inches long. It was obtained from an antique shop in London during World War II and then passed down through my family. It has etched symbols on the blade and is made of either bone or ivory. Any idea about this knife? It's a carved ivory Japanese tanto knife from the late 19th century. Back then, Samurai carried two swords, a long one and a short one. The shorter of the two was known as the tanto. Due to its small size, the tanto was often used for close quarters combat. It would be used when their katanas would be deemed ineffective or as an emergency weapon for certain situations. What is this antique silver something from the Hillsboro Museum in New Mexico? All the women working at the museum did not know what it was either. They asked me to post and try to find out what it was. It looks like it opens possibly a Rolodex or something for cigarettes. It was owned by Sadie Orchard who lived in Hillsboro and ran a motel. It is small like you could hold it in your hands. I couldn't get better pictures because it was inside a display case. Any ideas? It's a Victorian silver-plated folding biscuit barrel, an English silver-plated decorative jar, 
dating to the early Victorian period circa 1860. The handle can be pushed back taking the lid with it, allowing access to the treats within. What is this brick in a frame I found at an antique store in Orlando? It says Georgia Slave Tile, and I have no idea what it is. It is displayed in a shadow box at an antique store. I'm trying to ID it to see if it's actually affiliated with slaves or anything else I can learn about it before I buy it. Does anybody know what this is? These are what are called slave tiles from the 18th or 19th century. These were reportedly made and used by slaves in Georgia as grave markers. There are actually varying stories about them. Some say they were made by slaves on the plantation during the cotton off season. The different designs indicated different plantations. They were supposedly used as markers for graves. Other sources say the tiles had nothing to do with slaves and that they are a rare type of Victorian garden tile. Whatever the case, they are in demand and are often stolen from the cemetery. What is this thing I found while using my metal detector? Can anyone help? I found it in Yorkshire, Northern England. It's palm-sized metal, it's not magnetic, it doesn't spark when grinding, and is incredibly heavy and tough. I've tried drilling it with titanium drill bits and carbide tip drill bits, and all it does is spin, make a crevice, and nothing more. I'm sending a sample to my friend to examine it. And I'm also going to a museum later this week to see if they can examine it. I've also asked a local scrapyard to x-ray it. I'll let you all know as soon as I do. So I went to the museum, and after they examined it, they informed me that it was a bronze cast in the Bronze Age. I donated it to the museum for further tests. Thanks for the advice. What is this coin I found today while metal detecting in the UK? Using my Vanquish 340. I think it's 400 to 500 years old. That's how it came out of the ground. Will the value decrease if I hammered it flat? It's a 1361 hammered gold quarter noble. This is from the fourth coinage of King Edward III. This comes from the transitional treaty period, immediately after Edward III and King John II of France signed the Treaty of Brittany, ending the first phase of the Hundred Years' War. A good rule of thumb is that anything you do to alter a coin will decrease its collectible value. I'm seeing a valuation of anywhere from £400 to £1,500 from a quick search. Pretty awesome find. What is this antique piece of machinery probably from the early 20th century? It measures 4.5 inches long and weighs 8 ounces. A friend inherited this from his grandmother recently and has no idea what it could be. So far we've had no luck looking at kitchen utensils, tools, farm equipment, sewing machine parts, light fixtures, or piano pieces. Though of course, we could have missed something. The object came from Kentucky if that's helpful. Any idea what this could be? Please tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.